Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, AKA NeuroGalMD, and today we're going to talk about magnesium. Magnesium is an essential mineral required for healthy brain and heart function, energy production, bone health. Magnesium also holds anti-inflammatory properties and can therefore help prevent chronic disease. In this video, I'm going to discuss the signs of magnesium deficiency and who can potentially benefit from magnesium supplementation. Magnesium is also available in many different Different chemical forms that affect the body in different ways. So it's really important to choose the right form for a particular purpose. In this video, we're going to discuss exactly which forms are most beneficial for specific needs and which ones might actually be more dangerous. I'm also going to discuss safety considerations, potential side effects and drug interactions. Finally, I'll share my top quality brand picks based on third-party testing. I'll also share my own personal experience with magnesium as well as the brands that I currently use. About half of the US population lacks sufficient magnesium intake. Although magnesium can theoretically easily be obtained through the diet, research suggests that magnesium levels in soils may be lower nowadays, potentially making it more difficult to get magnesium in your diet. Magnesium deficiency can lead to fatigue, muscle cramping, muscle twitching. When severe, magnesium deficiency can also lead to elevated blood pressure, increased risk of bone fractures, osteoporosis, abnormal heart rhythm, cardiovascular disease, and even sudden cardiac death. Risk factors for severe deficiency include older age, alcohol abuse, diabetes, digestive tract diseases such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, and use of certain medications like proton pump inhibitors, diuretics, oral contraceptives, and estrogen replacement therapy. The commonly used blood test for magnesium deficiency measures magnesium concentration in the serum. This test is called serum magnesium. Serum magnesium may not accurately reflect total body magnesium status because most magnesium is actually stored inside the cells and bone. Because of this, a normal magnesium serum level can still mask a deficiency in total body magnesium. The magnesium red blood cell test is a more sensitive test that measures magnesium within the red blood cells. This test provides a better assessment of the body's magnesium status since it measures magnesium inside the cells. Although historically less available, this test can actually now easily be ordered through websites like Life Extension. So now I'm going to provide you with a concise overview of the latest research on the benefits of magnesium based on the most up-to-date evidence. Numerous studies have demonstrated that maintaining adequate magnesium intake can reduce the risk of developing dementia. In these studies, the dosage of magnesium ranged from approximately 250 to 300 milligrams per day and was obtained from both food and supplements. The forms of magnesium used included magnesium glycinate, magnesium threonate, and magnesium oxide. It's important to note that excessive magnesium intake has been associated with negative effects on cognition and mortality. More on that later. Observational studies have linked low magnesium levels with an increased risk of depression. Initial studies have shown benefits of magnesium supplementation for individuals with depression. Several studies suggest that magnesium may help older adults with insomnia fall asleep faster although it didn't seem to improve sleep quality or increase total sleep time. Now, these studies were only performed on older adults, so more research is needed to establish whether similar effects can be seen in younger individuals. Studies have shown that adequate intake of magnesium is associated with a decreased risk for developing type 2 diabetes and can improve insulin sensitivity and fasting glucose. Magnesium is sometimes recommended as a complementary treatment for migraine headaches. This is because magnesium has the ability to reduce or block the release of pain-related chemicals in the brain. Controlled trials have shown that magnesium citrate and magnesium oxide supplements can provide protection against migraines. The American Migraine Foundation and National Headache Foundation suggest a dose of 250 to 600 milligrams per day for up to three months to reduce the frequency of migraine attacks. Because such a high daily dose may not be safe, for certain medical conditions, it's important to consult with a physician if you're going to use high dose magnesium supplementation. Adequate magnesium intake also promotes better bone health and reduces bone fracture risk. It's associated with a lower risk of stroke, 
heart failure, type 2 diabetes. Magnesium may offer benefits for menstrual pain, premenstrual syndrome, may boost vitamin D levels, may reduce muscle soreness and inflammation after exercise, and it also provides relief for digestive issues as a laxative and antacid. Can you get all of your magnesium through your diet? Getting magnesium through the diet should theoretically be easy if you include magnesium-rich foods in your meals. Chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, spinach, and various nuts are excellent sources of magnesium. It's important to note that the magnesium content per serving significantly decreases in other foods, which increases the risk of deficiency if these food groups are not prioritized. Therefore, some people may decide to ensure adequate intake with supplements. Magnesium supplements are available in a variety of chemical forms that have different effects on the body. So it's important to choose the right form of magnesium based on your specific purpose. The most common forms that are easily absorbed by the gut and have minimal laxative effects include magnesium glycinate, also known as bisglycinate, threonate, and glycerophosphate. Types that are well absorbed by the gut but that may produce laxative effects include magnesium citrate, chloride, gluconate, aspartate, and lactate. Forms of magnesium that are not well absorbed include magnesium hydroxide, oxide, and sulfate. So these ones are not recommended if you intend to use magnesium orally to boost your levels, but they can be used as laxatives. If you're to choose magnesium glycinate, which is probably one of the most popular forms of magnesium, you need to make sure that the brand uses the chelated form. So this is where magnesium and glycine, which is an amino acid, are chemically bonded. This is really important because some manufacturers actually blend glycine with a cheaper form of magnesium magnesium, like magnesium oxide, to cut the cost instead of using the more expensive chelated magnesium glycinate. In a quality test conducted by NOW in 2022, all the brands tested that were sold on Amazon as magnesium glycinate were actually found to be blends rather than truly chelated magnesium glycinate. Included in this slide are the brands that were tested. NOW tested their own magnesium products, which were the only chelates that actually passed the test. Now I want to talk a little bit about magnesium threonate because it's gained a lot of attention for its potential cognitive benefits. But is it really more effective at enhancing cognition than other forms of magnesium? I found quite a few animal studies which were promising. A notable study in rats found that magnesium threonate significantly enhanced memory and increased brain magnesium levels compared to other forms of magnesium. But the doses used in this rat study were equivalent to seven grams per day in humans, which is 20 times the recommended upper intake levels for adults. It's important to note that excessive magnesium intake in humans is associated with significant safety concerns and risks. Another study in mice with excessive alcohol consumption showed that magnesium threonate reduced inflammation, improved gut health, and enhanced memory. In a mouse model of Parkinson's disease, magnesium threonate improved motor function, prevented dopamine neuron loss, and inhibited inflammation. Additionally, a study on rats with chronic neuropathic pain found that magnesium threonate prevented and restored memory deficits. Now, it seems that based on animal studies, magnesium threonate does hold promise for being exceptionally good for brain health and cognition. While these studies offer intriguing insights, it's essential to remember that animal studies don't always directly apply to humans. Human studies on magnesium threonate have yielded mixed results. One study combining magnesium threonate with phosphatidylserine showed significant improvements in five different memory subcategories for healthy adults. However, it's important to note that this study tested a combination of compounds which might have contributed to the positive outcomes. Another study on individuals with self-reported memory and concentration issues, anxiety, and sleep difficulties showed only slight improvement in executive function and no improvement in other cognitive domains, such as working memory, episodic memory, or attention. Magnesium threonate also did not improve anxiety or insomnia. Another small study on 17 individuals with dementia did not find significant cognitive improvements after two months of magnesium threonate supplementation. It's worth noting that other forms of magnesium, such as magnesium glycinate, magnesium oxide, and dietary magnesium found in food, have also shown positive effects on memory and cognition in human studies. Overall, while there is some evidence supporting magnesium threonate's cognitive benefits, there's insufficient solid proof to conclude that it's superior to other less expensive forms 
forms of magnesium, such as magnesium glycinate, for cognitive benefits in humans. So how much do you need? The recommended daily intake of magnesium varies depending on age and sex. For adults, it typically ranges between 300 and 400 milligrams per day. It's important to consider both dietary intake and supplementation to meet these recommendations. If your diet doesn't provide enough magnesium, a supplement of 100 to 200 milligrams can be sufficient and safe. When treating a known deficiency, higher doses of 250 to 600 milligrams may be recommended, but it's crucial to consult with a physician due to the potential harmful effects associated with higher doses of magnesium. Also, keep in mind that I'm talking about elemental magnesium, which is the amount of actual magnesium in a supplement. This information is typically listed on the product labels. This is important because magnesium compounds contain varying percentages of elemental magnesium, such as 14% in magnesium glycinate, 6% in magnesium threonate, 11% in magnesium citrate, and 60% in magnesium oxide. So here's an example to illustrate this. The label on Now's magnesium glycinate tablet states that each serving contains 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium derived from 2,000 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate or glycinate. Magnesium supplements may cause upset stomach, nausea, or diarrhea. If someone is taking magnesium for a purpose other than for laxative effects, it's wise to use a formulation that's associated with less risk for diarrhea. Toxicity for magnesium is uncommon when it's obtained from food sources because the kidneys effectively eliminate excess magnesium through the urine. However, prolonged use of high dose magnesium supplements can lead to toxic effects. The following is a list of symptoms associated with magnesium toxicity. Individuals with kidney disease are at a higher risk of toxicity because their kidneys cannot adequately remove excess magnesium from the body. With regard to safety concerns of specific forms of magnesium, there are two safety concerns you really need to be aware of. Number one, magnesium citrate can enhance the absorption of aluminum from other medications and foods. Excessive aluminum in in the body can be harmful, particularly for individuals with kidney problems. Symptoms of aluminum toxicity can include bone pain, muscle weakness, and impaired cognitive function. Aluminum has also been linked to the development of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease. It's important that you avoid taking magnesium citrate concurrently with aluminum-containing medications, such as antacids like Maalox. There are also safety concerns regarding one form of magnesium. This is called magnesium orotate, which contains erotic acid. Animal studies have shown that high doses of erotic acid can promote tumor growth in experimental tumors. It may be wise to avoid supplements containing magnesium orotate. Magnesium can interact with a wide variety of medications. These are listed on this slide. So if you're on one of these medications, it's important that you consult with a physician prior to starting a magnesium supplement. Here is a list of several high quality magnesium supplement brands that I discovered in my research. This is not an exhaustive list and only reflects the brands that have the highest quality and safety testing scores with third party testing companies and organizations that I use. In my opinion, for raising magnesium levels, magnesium glycinate is likely the best form to take. It has good bioavailability, it has minimal laxative effects, better safety profile than other forms of magnesium. In preliminary studies, it's also been shown to improve cognition, like magnesium threonate, but it's less expensive than magnesium threonate. Magnesium threonate may also be a good option if you're looking to also optimize your cognitive function, even though only preliminary clinical evidence exists for a cognitive advantage for threonate in humans, it seems to be well absorbed by the gut and laxative effects are minimal. Just keep in mind that magnesium threonate tends to be more expensive. For those taking magnesium as a natural remedy for migraines, magnesium oxide and citrate are the forms that were found to be helpful as migraine preventative therapies and studies. Keep in mind that oxide and citrate will likely produce a laxative effect. Magnesium citrate can reasonably increase intracellular magnesium levels, however, Magnesium oxide does not do as well of a job in this arena. So what is my experience with magnesium supplementation? So I've been taking magnesium supplements on and off for the past 10 years. After getting pregnant and giving birth to my child in 2020, I stopped taking many supplements, including magnesium. About a year ago, I started to experience worsening muscle cramps and twitching. This is called fasciculations. And I noticed that the twitching and the cramping was worse at night. So it really affected my sleep. 
around the time that I developed those fasciculations, I had started running longer distances. I hadn't done that since before I was pregnant. So this muscle cramping and twitching progressively got worse over the course of four to five months. And so I thought, well, maybe it's some sort of nutritional deficiency. I suspected that it was magnesium. So I started taking magnesium three and eight from Life Extension. And literally within a week, the muscle cramps and the twitching disappeared. I didn't test my magnesium levels prior to starting the magnesium supplementation, but the fact that the symptoms had been going on for so long and then pretty quickly stopped after I started taking magnesium strongly suggests that I did indeed have a magnesium deficiency. The one additional thing that I had noticed is that I do tend to fall asleep more easily when taking magnesium. This is purely subjective. I have no objective proof of this, uh, but I think it helps with my sleep. Uh, and it's not just the fact that I'm no longer having muscle twitching. Um, I really do think that there is some additional mechanism of action that is allowing for, for my sleep to to be better. This is Nurek LMD. I hope you found this overview of magnesium supplementation helpful. If you enjoyed the information, please consider liking this video and following me for additional videos on wellness and neuroscience topics. We'll catch you next time.